Welcome back to lab uh, exercise 39. We are in the arthropods. So this is the second video of two. So be sure that you've watched that first video or that you do plan to watch that first video. And so now we are going to complete our journey through the arthropods with two more subphyla. Two, one, two. All right. So the first one is Myriapoda. I bet you can't guess what that means. Maybe you don't know. That's okay. So remember poda, uh, the Latin, um, the Latin suffix poda means feet or appendages. So myria means many. So many appendages or feet. It can be uh, translated both ways. So these are the centipedes and millipedes are the myriapods, all right? And within myriapoda, you have a couple of classes because the, the centipedes and millipedes are in their own classes, all right? So here we go, strap in. Let's start with class chelopoda. So class chelopoda are the centipedes, all right? The centipedes, here's the thing, I'm about to blow your mind. Centipedes don't actually have 100 legs. I mean, they can have, some of them can have over 100, but it's never like exactly 100. Some of them only have like 30 something, but they're called centipedes. They have fewer legs than millipedes. Maybe that's that's where it came from. But just so you know, so chelopoda, um, interestingly, this means lip foot. And that is because if you would with me, and uh, if you look on page 446 on figure 39.10, let me put that in here actually, because that's good to look at. Oh, I'm going to like type it in right now. Here we go. All right. You can see very clearly the, um, so these centipedes, they're called chelopods because so kilo means lip. So kilopoda means lip foot. I'm not, I don't make the rules. That's just what they're called. All right. So what that, where does that name even come from? Lip foot. It, it's because their maxillopeds, these modified legs, are modified into fangs for capturing prey and subduing prey with toxins. And so that first and second maxilla and the maxilla ped, so you have maxilla, all right, and then the maxilla ped is modified basically into a thing. So this gives you a hint about the niche of these animals. So centipedes, by and large, not by and large, they are, they are predatory. Centipedes are carnivorous. All right, so that's something to remember. All centipedes are carnivorous. They tend to live in soil, under rocks, under logs, right? And they are predatory. And the way that you can tell a centipede is a centipede rather than a millipede, a couple ways. The first is, do you notice this? Maybe it's hard for you to tell, but centipedes tend to be flat. They are flat bodied. So their body is, it's like a sandwich. All right, so centipedes have a pretty flat body. Um, and I'm going to go through how to, you know, compare the millipedes and centipedes in just a minute. But just to talk about the centipedes, flat body, and each segment has one leg on it. Okay, so those are the centipedes. They're predatory. And centipedes can have venom in their fangs for subduing prey. So if you pick up a centipede, it could bite you and it could hurt, but it won't kill you or anything. So just be aware of that. So those are the chelopods. Now let's talk about the millipedes. This is class diplopoda. I love millipedes. Millipedes are peaceful boys. Sorry. Well, they are. So uh, I told you... The chelopods, the centipedes, they could bite you. They probably won't unless they feel really threatened or maybe they think your food, which is unlikely 
because you don't look like another tiny arthropod. But millipedes are herbivorous and detritivorous, which means that they feed only on plant matter. So they are not, they are not predatory, they're not carnivorous. And they're called diplopods because diplo means two and poda means foot or appendage. You might notice this, this pattern, right? So diplopoda means two legs. And that is a hint because millipedes, if you look at each segment of which there are many, do you notice each segment has two legs? It's a clue. Okay, so that is helpful. And remember, the millipedes are diplopoda. They have two legs on each segment, all right? Well, so that is a key distinction. So those in the Myriapoda, you only have to know two classes, and they are the centipedes, chelopoda, and the millipedes, diplopoda. So let's compare and contrast those briefly again, just to review. So here we have, and most of the time when people see these animals, they get really freaked out by them. Um, but really, they don't want to have anything to do with you. And millipedes are, are herbivorous and detritivorous. And when I say detritivorous, detritus is decaying organic matter. That just means that they, they can eat, they'll eat decaying leaves and other decaying organic matter. So the centipedes notice the flat body, whereas the millipede has a rounded body. If we go back here, you can very clearly see that nice, beautiful little rounded body there. Typically, and this isn't true all the time, so, but I will go ahead and tell you, oftentimes when you're looking at a millipede, you'll often find more segments on a millipede. You, most of the time, that's true. When you look at the number of legs on each segment, that's a clue. So whether or not the, ba the body is dorsoventrally flattened, that's a clue, and how many legs are on the segments. If there's only one leg on the segments, that's a kilopod. That is a centipede. If there's multiple legs on segments, that's a diplopod. That's a millipede. Okay? And then we're just reviewing their niches. Kilopods, centipedes are predatory. And they have fangs. I'm a centipede. Okay? You, oh, you should do it too. Let's be centipedes. Ready? Okay. I'm, I do these things to help you remember. And if you're a millipede... Hold them and feed them a leaf. Yeah, okay. So those are the myriopods, subphylum myriopoda. Right. Now, now we have reached the moment I have been waiting for since some time. My favorite. So we are now in subphylum hexapoda. I'm so excited. Morty, are you excited? Morty? Hey. Oh, see, he's excited too. Great, dude. Yeah, I know. We're so jive. We love insects. So subphylum hexapoda includes class insecta. There are a few non-insect hexapods, but we are going to mainly just, well, we're only going to be just talking about class insecta. To keep things simple, because there's plenty, plenty to talk about with the insects. So, let's get to it. Addressed for the occasion. All right. So, you may be familiar with insects. You may love them. You may not love them. You may be indifferent. But these are the most, some of the most wildly, the most wildly successful animals on the planet. Arthropods are, are, are the most successful phylum. And that it owes a lot to those three prominent and distinguishing characteristics of the arthropods, of their jointed appendages, and their chitinous exoskeleton, right, and their segmented bodies. But the insects, man, they have exploited practically every niche. Oh, so who are the insects? Well, I hope you can name some insects because most people are familiar, at least with insects, right? So these are flies, grasshoppers, butterflies, man, I could go forever, bees, stick bugs, shield bugs, 
Oh man, I'm, I'm, oh, did I say bees already? Wasps, ants, butterflies, ooh, butterflies, oh, praying mantis, that's actually what this is supposed to look like, stoneflies, mayflies, caddisflies, what? What? Oh, they don't want to hear about every, yes, they do. Fine, oh, fine, okay, fine. Fine, I'll move on. Okay, fine. So we'll talk about the distinguishing characteristics of insects. Obviously, hexapoda, hexa means six, and poda means foot or appendages. So, six legs. There you go. All right, so distinguishing characteristics, particularly of class insecta. Six legs, that's one of them. <laughs> Three body regions. You have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And two pairs of wings. And we call these wings the fore wings and the hind wings. And actually, the hind wings have been lost in some of these animals, particularly um, some, of the, some of the dipterans, which are the flies only have a, a pair. All right, these, you have like one, you have like almost 10 million species of insects. Amazing. And just to be clear, so wings, unlike some of the other animals we've talked about and their appendages being some sort of modified leg, wings are not modified appendages. They are actual outgrowths of the thoracic, so that second body segment, exoskeleton. So let's talk about insect anatomy, and we're going to focus on an orthopteran. So that is a class, that is an order of insects. So kingdom, phylum, subphylum, class, order. Orthoptera. Those are the grasshoppers. All right. So now we're on procedure 39.3. You can follow along in your book. So let's do. We're going to do the external anatomy and the internal anatomy, and and do a little. Grasshopper dissection. All right, here we have a lovely grasshopper. Notice the three body sites, segments, excuse me. The head, and there's a joint there, you can go. The thorax, and each part of the thorax um, has a set of legs, and so we actually have names even for the different parts of the thorax. So this first part here, this is the prothorax, and then as you move farther down, you have the mesothorax. And then before you get to the abdomen, you have the uh, metathorax. Okay? So each of those has a set of legs. Now, then you get down to the abdomen here. So this is all the thorax. Prothorax, mesothorax, and metathorax. Then you get to the abdomen. Each Abdominal, abdominal segment has its own spiracle. So you, it, they're very small, but about here and here, here and here and here. So every abdominal segment has a spiracle. And these spiracles are openings that are important, that are you function in gas exchange for the animal. So this is how the grasshopper account accomplishes ga gas exchange with the outside and takes in oxygen. And these spiracles are connected to tracheal tubes, the tracheal tubules on the inside of the body, which we'll see just in just a minute when we dissect the animal. Well, we're not dissecting the animal when we watch somebody dissect the animal. Okay, so those are the spiracle. spiracles, excuse me. All right, and yeah, so they open to the tracheal tubes of the respiratory system. So let's go through each of this in turn, shall we? Yes. So. Here in the head, they have antennae. So insects have a set of antennae here. And then they have their compound eye, but they also have simple eyes. And they have multiple simple eyes here, here, and here. And you, it's, you can't really see them here, but here, here, and here. And those simple eyes are not like compound eyes. They don't form in images. They are simply 
light sensing organs, so they allow the animal to better sense movement around it. If we get to the mouth parts, I'm going to show you part of a dissection video, if you don't mind. Or you can actually see the labrum, because that is one of the structures we want to see. But then you also have the maxillary palps here. Okay, so you see the palps. The labrum is hard to tell here in this in this diagram, but the labrum basically is like a shield that covers the mouth parts. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. If we go, that's not a great. That's not what I want. Ah, here we are. We got it. So let's look at that. Ah, yes. Okay, so here, this nice fellow is showing us the mouth parts of the grasshopper. And so if you look, he's going to pull up, the, and he's actually going to pull off the labrum. So here is the labrum. So it's basically a shield from the mouth part. So there's the labrum. He's actually about to take off the labrum. Right? And you see? So it's like a shield over the mouth parts. Okay. So next he's going to take out other parts of the, um, the mouth. But I want to go ahead and move forward so you can see... So he's the mandibles, but the main thing I want to show you are the maxillary pulps. He's just showing you these various mouth parts. All right, here we go. These are the maxillary pulps right there. So these, these are maxillary pulps. Nope, sorry, right there. There and there. So you can see all these structures that... Here's the thing, insect mouth parts are incredibly complex and beautiful, and you have a wide array of mouth part diversity among the, the insects. But let's just, just briefly, what you need to know is the labrum and the maxillary palps, or you could just call them palps, that's okay too. All right, let's move back to our diagram and move on through. So. You saw those beautiful mouth parts. All right. So now here, and we'll see this in our dissection is the tympanum. This is how the beautiful grasshopper hears. It's basically its hearing organ. And you, oftentimes you have to move back this jumping leg to see it or move the wing back. Um, but that is where it's located on the animal. All right, and here you can see the forewing on top. The forewing is the top wing. The hind wing is the back wing that is typically on the bottom. And this and this diagram is a female because this female has an ovipositor. And when we watch the dissection, you'll very clearly be able to see it's basically this um, this structure here that is forked, and this is what the female uses to deposit eggs, all right? Briefly, we'll go through, on the diagram, let's go through the internal anatomy. Um, oh, fiddlesticks, I didn't skip, I didn't go back. Y'all are like, go back, go to the slides, here they are. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, once again, you saw the eyes, so the simple eyes and the compound eyes. We saw the palps and the labrum. There's the tympanum. That is the grasshopper's ear, all right? Forewing here on top, which is in the front. Hindwing is in the back, all right? You already saw the spiracles. Spiracles are for respiration. And then the ovipositor, this branched apparatus here. So this would be a female because this is what the female uses. This is the organ for depositing eggs, the ovipositor. Now, let's look briefly at this, and then we'll go on to the dissection itself, shall we? Okay. So, here you have the grasshopper's ganglia, which are essentially the grasshopper's brain, the mouth. Here is the crop. That is for food storage. And then let's just move down. We'll go down the digestive tract first. So, you have the crop. 
the gastric ceca, which are for digestion, all right? And here, right behind the gastric ceca, and it's, I think it's cut off a little bit here. Let me see if I can make my window a little bit smaller, and perhaps you can see it a little bit better. Well, it's still cut off. We will fix it, though. Don't worry. Ah, here he is. No, no, still cut off. All right, that's no big deal. So what this little line is pointing to, that is the stomach. All right. Here we have the Malpighian tubules. The Malpighian tubules are really hard to see oftentimes when you actually dissect the animal. But the Malpighian tubules are um, for detoxification. So detoxification and metabolic wastes. Like in the last video, we talked about green glands in the, in the crayfish. Well, here you have Malpighian tubules. And so they detoxify metabolic waste similar to your kidneys would. So these are very primitive kidneys, right? Cool. So as we move back down, farther down, we have the intestine. And then we get to here's the rectum and the anus. So that's the digestive tract of a grasshopper. So now let's go up here and we can see the aorta, the main blood vessel here. And as you move down, you have the heart, all right? So you have this blood vessel that goes through the grasshopper. So they do have an open circulatory system. And then you have the, the gonads. This is for them. Again, this diagram is a female. So here you have the ovary. Okay, great. And you have, um, those are the main things that we want you to know. Um, down here you have the seminal receptacle, but that's typically really hard to see on a female. So. Let's go through a dissection and we'll go through each of these that you need to know. Make sure you see them. Now, before I just showed you the labrum, which is that shield on the mouth, the pulp, so those maxillary pulps, which are like, they look like this, right, that you saw in the last video. So if you need to review that, just kind of back it up and get a good look at those. Um, or you can look at that diagram on the last slide. Compound eyes, so those are just the eyes. Now the ocelli, the ocelli is what is the scientific term for those simple eyes. So the simple eyes actually look like this. They go, mm -mm -mm. that's actually where they are on a grasshopper. They have three. So ocelli are the simple eyes that are light sensing organs. So they don't detect images, they detect light and dark so they can help the grasshopper detect movement. We're gonna look at the rest of these uh, on the the dissection video. So let's just get over there, shall we? I think we should. All right. So let's go back to my internet window right here. Okay. So again, biology by me, that's whose who's dissection videos we've been watching. And I encourage you, if you want to like just review, uh, review that a lot, he does a really good job of explaining. I'm just explaining for you so that you see the things that I want you to see. So here we have a female and a male. Do you notice a difference between when we looked at the crayfish? Yes. So these are the jumping legs. And actually, this is technically called, well, this is a tibia, kind of like your tibia, right? And your femur. They're called the same thing. But these are the jumping legs. And the reason that these grasshoppers have hairs on their legs is because when they're when they're flying or they're jumping and they're coming down to keep them from like getting all the way to the ground, which can actually be dangerous if you're an arthropod, right? There could be more predators down there. It helps them to catch on to vegetation so they stay pretty well suspended above the actual ground. So, I mean, obviously you find grasshoppers on the ground, but have you ever noticed they kind of hang out, they'll grab onto grass? It's with their legs with, on the, with the spines on their tibias. That's just a fun fact to tell you. Oh, okay, so now we're looking at the segment. So here's the head. Now, he's telling, now let me make something clear here, because this is a little bit incorrect on the video. I think he's telling you that this is your, at, your thorax. No, nay, your thorax is all of this. The thorax includes the legs on the grasshopper because you have the pro, so you have the three thorax segments, right? The prothorax, right? mesothorax, and metathorax. So be aware of that. Don't be confused by that. And then down here you have the abdomen. All right. 
So here he's going to be pointing out, let's see, he's, we're looking at those beautiful, oh, beautiful looks. And here is the ovipositor. So this is the structure you're looking for. So if you're trying to sex a grasshopper, am I looking at a male grasshopper or a female grasshopper? This would be your clue. And that is, this grasshopper has, well, now it's blurry. This grasshopper has an ovipositor. And so you have that fort, it's forked there like that, okay? It's pretty hard to mistake it. There's the ovipositor. That's a male. It's just a nub at the end. <laughs> so that's how you can remember. And let me go back if you want to see that a little longer. Okay, so that's the ovipositor. Yep, see that little nub? Not him. Yep, clearly male. Okay, so he is slowly going to dismember this uh, grasshopper. So we'll just we'll skip ahead of that. But if we were in the lab, that's what you would be doing. You first take off the legs. You actually twist off the legs of a grasshopper to dissect it. I'm sorry for those of you who that hurts. Um, so, yes, okay, we know. All right. Oh, so let's look at the wings. Here is the beautiful forewing. The forewing is actually pretty heavy compared to the hind wings. Um, and that you see that in some of the various orders of insects that they'll have a really heavy forewing or their forewing is modified into some sort of structure that is protective of the hind wing. Um, these grasshoppers, orthopterans, their forewings aren't horribly heavy. They're not as heavy as like the beetle forewings, which we call elytra. Um, that's what the forewings and beetles are called. You don't have to know that. But there's the hind wing. See, I get so excited about insects. Oh, but here you are. So the main flight wings in the orthopterans, which are the grasshoppers, which I'm just telling you their order, um, just so you can hear it. We'll talk about that more when we get to the dichotomous key. Um, but there you have the forewing and then the hind wing, which is primarily for is actually the most important for flight. And yes, so we would have to twist off the wings. I know it's too bad, but thankfully this grasshopper is dead, so it's okay. All right, so let's see, here we are. Do you see where he just circled? Let's go back to that. Oh, and why? Let's just make this the whole screen. What am I even doing here, right? I apologize. Let's make this real big for y'all. There we go. So. But those were structures that were easy to see, so no big deal, right? I'm actually just going to make sure, double check that you are looking at my screen. Great. I don't want to be doing the video and then get to the end and be like, oh, wait, it was just me the whole time talking about grasshoppers, but you can't see anything. All right. Hey, man, I may be a professor, but we're all human, right? All right. So those are the wings, and they're beautiful. And we're twisting. And we're twisting, and here we are, yas, right here. Check it. He's pointing on it. I'm stopping on it. That's the tympanum. That is the grasshopper's aud auditory organ. That's how the grasshopper hears sound. It's called the tympanum. Please remember that, tympanum. Just like you have a tympanic membrane in your ear, maybe it'll that can help you remember. So there it is. Beautiful. It's got one on both, but there it is again. So beautiful. So important for the grasshopper to sense what's around it. So now, I think he's going to open up the grasshopper. Hey, dude, you should really open up that grasshopper. It's time. Yeah, he's telling you that we're going to cut up it dorsally. Here's the thing, just so you know, for your own edification, when you dissect an animal, particularly a small animal like this or any sort of arthropod, you want to point your scissors up rather than down because if you point them down, you'll basically cut through all their organs. And gosh, why would you do that? You just killed a bug for no reason. Actually, yeah, this isn't a true bug. We'll get into that. So he's opening up the grasshopper. We're going to skip through that because that's not, you know, the most important part of this. All right, 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 Reggie. He's gonna open up the animal. Oh, 
fine. We'll go at your pace then. <laughs> if we have an issue with loading, that's okay. We can always come back. Let's come back here and see if that'll help. And we're opening. And we're opening up the exoskeleton. Oh, looking good. All right. I think we're on a good track here. We are loading again. All right. So opening up the animal. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. Grasshopper guts. All right. Oh, yes. Okay. Whoa, wait. Oh, me. Oh, wait. I can turn. I have the power. Oh, man. Okay. So I want to show you the tracheal tubules. Here we go. So. Those spiracles I told you about that were important for gas exchange that are found on each abdominal segment, they lead to tracheal tubules, which are these little tubes here. And those tubes are, actually they're pretty big up here in the anterior end of the animal. Those are tracheal tubules. Those exchange gas between the outside of the animal and the inside. They carry oxygen into the animal. So that is how the animal, that's how the animal respires. It carries um, gases in and out of the animal. Oxygen in, CO2 out. All right. Great. He's going to point some out. Great. Love. So any, so these, this is a really nice one. But you're going to see it all on the abdomen. And you do have some more anterior, anterior spiracles, but every abdominal segment has a spiracle. So that's why I said that you have a pretty big one up there at the top. But every abdominal segment has one. All right. So, oh, and we're loading again. Hmm. Oh, you're fully loaded, guys. Sorry. So, but let me point some things out while we're waiting. So here, this is very prominent. So it's very easy to just go ahead and show you. This is the crop. And the crop's purpose, the function of the crop, is to store food. All right, similar to an earthworm's crop, but different from earthworms, grasshoppers do not have a gizzard. So this is the crop. And then right here, it's hard to tell, but here in a moment, he'll show us. We're going to see the gastric cica. Okay, I'm going to try to give the video a little bit more time to load. If we have to, that's okay. I can come back to this, and I apologize for that. Man, technology, right? Am I right? You know I'm right. All right, so we're going to pause this. That's okay. We don't give it a minute. And perhaps we'll just, we'll go back through and see. Let me just check my internet connection. That's what that's, that is. Ah, here we are. See? Now all I had to do was check it. Okay. I knew it. So he's going to open up the rest of the animal. Great. Again, you can see some of those tracheal tubules down there. Oh, this is such a good grasshopper dissection. He's be, you have to be very delicate with these small animals because it's very easy to mess up their, their organs. So again, he is that's the crop. And he's going to start, hopefully he'll show us the gastric cica here in a sec. But right now, he's, that's the crop. Okay. Yes, that crop is, now that's, that was the stomach. We'll come back to that. But he's going to tease apart the gastric cica. Because they look like little, little, yeah, like those. They're little lobes. They're basically little lobes that are all around here. So there, there. Yes, so beautiful. Gas, those are the gastric cica. And they are part of the digestive system. And they are involved in digestion. Like back here, you can see he's teasing some more apart. I'll move my cursor down because he's doing a fine job. Great. So those are the gastric cica. And below the gastric cica, you find a stomach. Ooh. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Oh, guys. Oh, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. So. Look. Oh, tracheal tubules. Can you even believe the respiration? All right, so again, the crop, the gastric cica. Now you can really see them. This is just the most beautiful thing. Oh, all right, so there they are, digestion. Now, here's the stomach. 
obviously important for digestion. And as you move down the digestive tract, doo -doo 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 -doo, he's going to go farther down. Okay, so now below the stomach, he's looking for malpighian tubules. They're like tiny little thread-like things. It actually looks like these are malpighian tubules here. Um, but they would be around this area. They're really difficult to find sometimes. So just to remind you, the malpighian tubules are primitive kidneys. So they are important for the detoxification of metabolic wastes in the animals. So they are analogous to your kidneys, and they are analogous to the green glands of a crayfish. So those, well, they're tough to see, but I mean, they're there. It's this area right here. They're basically little threads. I can see them right here. So malpighian tubules there. And then as you move farther down, that's, you have the intent. Oh, go back, buddy. What are you doing? Why that? Come on, you have to hurry. Here's the intestine. And as you move down, you'll have the rectum and then the anus at the end of the animal. Yes, what a lady. So now he's going to, I think we're going to look at, maybe looking at ganglia. But I'm going to skip forward just a tad. All right, so I don't see a good one there. Yeah. All right. So now you can very clearly see here's the antenna. And he's actually going to take, he's going to make a mount of the compound eye, I believe. I'll skip forward for that. And your ocelli, oh, just to be clear here, your ocelli will be here and then on the other side. And then there's actually one below, a bit below the antennae, right between the eyes. So you have three on, on the orthopterans, the grasshoppers. Cool. So he is going to make a mount of the eye, check it. Yeah, and I don't think he actually shows it on screen, but that's, that's all we needed to see. So let us go back to our diagram and I'll change my scene again. I'm back. All right, so let's just briefly and quickly, um, we didn't really get to a good look at ovaries in that specimen, um, but let me just briefly review. And I go over these multiple times just because there's a lot to know and it, it never hurts. So we saw the crop, we saw the gastric cica, we saw the stomach, now piggy and tubules, they're tough to see, but again, just know their function. They're very string-like and small, the intestine, the rectum, and the anus. All right, we didn't get a really a great look at the heart, but the heart would be here. The ovaries, so the ovaries in the grasshopper are typically light colored, um, if you were to see those. So here, all right. And then remember the external anatomy, the, the tympanum, the ocelli, or, or the simple eyes, the maxillary palp, the labrum, which is that shield, okay, over the mouth parts, forewing, hindwing, and ovipositor. And those are the main things that you need to be sure that you are aware of, as well as the body segments of the, the insect and the tracheal tubules, which we saw and I got really excited about. All right, so um, we're going to, we're going to kind of get close to closing up here, I believe. Um, we're just gonna go through the last little bit of insects. And I, if you would turn with me to page 450. So your procedure 39.5 talks about how to use a dichotomous key, which is really important, especially for folks like me who study insects. So I study aquatic insects. Insects could be terrestrial or aquatic. For example, mayflies and stoneflies 
you may or may not be familiar with those animals, they fly around, but their lymph stage, their larval stages are all aquatic. So, and there are fully aquatic, of course, insects. So you have a really beautiful, diverse array of, this, of mouth parts and thus feeding modes. So this is another way and another reason that insects have been so good at exploiting me, so many niches on Earth. So that ability to disperse and move because of their jointed appendages, right? They've got wings and these mouth parts. The wide diversity of mouth parts is a huge advantage for the insect class because you have sucking mouth parts. You have a proboscis on an, a, a butterfly. You have so sucking mouth parts. You also have sucking mouth parts in what we call the true bugs, um, which is actually a particular order of insects. When you say bug, a bug is actually an animal in order Hemiptera. Everything else you talk about is an insect. And you don't, oh my gosh, it's not a bug. It's not, it's not a bug. It's not a bug. Okay. So we are like, well, what are the bugs? Well, they're the bugs. Oh, well, okay. So they're like shield bugs and stink bugs. Those are true bugs. Um, Walking stick bugs, those are true bugs. Uh, I'm trying to think of other organisms in the order Hemiptera you would know well. Giant water bugs, maybe you don't know about those. I should send you videos. Uh, look them up. Giant water bug. That is a true bug. So those class order Hemiptera, so class insecta, order Hemiptera, those are the true bugs. Just for fun. Okay, so if somebody's like, hey, did you see that bug? And you're like, what was it? And they're like, well, here, Morty, help me. Hey, how did you see that bug? No, what was it? An ant. Ants aren't bugs. They're insects. Okay, so, so many mouth parts. Lapping mouth parts. Chewing mouth parts. Chewing mouth parts are incredibly common among the insects. In the beetles, which is order Coleoptera, and the grasshoppers, which is order Orthoptera. I don't, now... I, for my class, I, I want you to know class insecta, um, but I am not going to make you know the orders of insects memorized. You may have to key them out, but, and if you choose to memorize them, then all the better. But for my section, they may just be asked to key them out. Um, but if you're in Dr. Jones's section, you should ask her. And maybe I'll ask her so that, and I'll make sure that she knows that I, in this video I'm saying, hey, just so you know, I'm saying all these orders of animals, but I'm not making my class memorize them, but you will have to key them out. So it would be an advantage to memorize them. And they're actually not terribly hard, but I know since there's so much, there's so much for you to learn here, you may be like, Whoa! so just know that in my section, we will maybe key, you will be keying them out. So, but it would be easier if you memorize them. All right, so let's, and that's what this last part of the exercise is. So, this is page 450, and we are going to, and I want, oh, I'm just so excited because I want to teach you about dichotomous keys. These are what people like me who are entomologists, um, who's, an entomologist is someone who studies insects, and so we use these to identify some of our animals. And because oftentimes we're taking animals much farther down taxonomically, like to the genus level or even the species level, which is really hard on most insects. So let us do this. We're going to go through each one of these. You ready? Okay. So you have to do this. Actually, the dichotomous key itself is on page 451. And the way a dichotomous key works is you go, hey, does this insect have this characteristic? If it does, then you need to stay on that line. And if it doesn't, then you move on. Okay. Can you see it? I can't. No. Okay. That's all right. So here. Here we have a B. All right. So I'm going to go through each one of these. And hopefully you, I would like for you to do it with me. So insects with two wings. Does this have two wings? What was that? They don't. Oh, you're right. They have four wings and hind wings. So 
we should move on from number one, from right there, and go, it says insects with four wings, a pair of four wings, and a pair of hind wings. Yep, so we go to number two. Ah. Four and hind wings are not alike in texture. Well, these wings really look the same. So the next characteristic is they are similar, usually clear, thin, and transparent. Yup. So we go to number five. Let's see that number five there. That means you go up to number five. You skip all these and go to five. Wings of same length and tinny shorter than head. Hmm. Well, these wings seem shorter than these wings. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Wings not the same length. There you go. Antennae long or enlarged toward the end. It's hard to tell, but that's for sure, right? So we go on. It says to go to number seven. It says wings covered with fine opaque scales with tubular coiled or sucking. This is not, nope, negative. Sucking mouth parts. The next characteristic, though, is wings thin, transparent, and not covered with scales. Sounds about right. And mandibles well developed. You can't see the mandibles on this animal because it's a picture. But if I were to give you a bee, it, it would, just so you know. But the main thing is those wings do not have those scales like a butterfly does. So this is a member of Hymenoptera. The Hymenoptera are the bees, ants, and wasps. And I have lots of Hymenopterans that live in my yard. Maybe we'll go, maybe I'll have an arthropod hunt um, that I'll put up on my Instagram. And I'll, um, in case you, if you want to follow along, um, that's, that's our Instagram for the biology class. I mean, yeah, if you want to, because we, we sometimes post things about, um, especially now that we're in arthropods, I'll be posting a lot about arthropods. Okay, so the bee is ordered, these are bees, wasps, and ants, Hymenoptera. All right, so now here is a butterfly. Now, rather, we're, up, we're just about, you know, up to another hour. So I want you to go through each of these, um, but we'll do another one together. All right. So we went through, these have four wings clearly, right? So if we go through, insect with four wings, right? We've got four pair, four wings and hind wings. All right. So we're going to move on to two. And they seem to be alike in texture. So we're going to move on to number five on the dichotomous key. And here's the thing, if I go too fast, stop, stop, pause the video and go, okay. All right, I see why we're doing that now, okay? Great. So sometimes it's hard for me to know because um, I try to go slow, but I, get, I really get excited about insects. So we are on this butterfly and we are on number five in the dichotomous key. Wings of same length. These are not the same length, guys, so you know. All right, so we're going to move on. To wings not of same length. There you go. Antennae long or large toward the end. They, if it's longer than the head, we kind of consider that long. So there you go. So we go to number seven. Wings covered with fine opaque scales. It's hard to tell when you're just looking at a butterfly, but if you looked at their wings under a microscope, they actually are covered in scales. And they have sucking mouth parts. It's hard to tell from my picture, so I'm sorry about that because we're not in the lab and I can't go, here's a butterfly. But these are the butterflies and moths. So these are the butterflies and moths. These are order Lepidoptera. Ooh. Yes. This. Look. Aha. Is that the plastic butterfly does not have a sucking mouth part. I am outraged. It's not even like a real butterfly. Okay, so let's move on. Now, I'm going to let you go through the rest of the dichotomous key together um, with our, like, go through it with these animals. Um, but I, okay, I'm going to do one more because I really think this is fun. So, here is the dragonfly. So, you have two sets of wings, right? So, you're going to move on. You don't have just two wings. You have four. So, you go to number two. 
Fore and hind wings are not alike in texture. Well, these do look like they are. So again, we're moving on to five. Wings of same length, antennae usually shorter than head. Yep, that's true too. Large insects. Wings are longer than three centimeters. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen a dragonfly? They're big. Wings long and transparent with many strong veins. Abdomen long and slender. Oh, that's these guys. So these are the, obviously they're the dragonflies. Dragonflies are in order Odonata. Oh, spelled it wrong. There you go. Odonata. We call them Odonates. Okay. You know what? We're just going to do it. You can skip through whatever you want to, I guess. But we, I just, I want to be sure you got it good. All right. That's my, that's what I do. So, again, you may look at this stag beetle and go, oh, there's only two wings. But here's the thing. These we call these elytra. Um, you don't have to know that word. I'm just telling you what they're called. And they are basically wing coverings in in the beetles. And they're more of a protective function. They don't actually help so much with flying. The hind wings are the main flying wings. And but they do have two sets of wings because these are wings. Okay. So we have a, once again an insect with four wings. So we are number two. Fore and hind wings are not alike in texture and color. That's true. So we'll go to number three. Four wings thick and leather-like at base. Tips much thinner and may be transparent. Well, they're thick, but they're not really leather-like. Mouth parts pointed and beak-like. I can tell you, you can't see it on this beetle, so I will just tell you. Beetles don't have, and here's the thing, we wouldn't ask you something you can't see. But beetles, obviously these aren't leathery, so you could get it from that. But they also, beetles don't have sucking mouth parts or piercing mouth parts. They actually have biting mouth parts. So we're going to move on to um, four wings, same texture throughout. That's true. So we're going to go to number four. Four wings leathery and with veins. No. Four wings hard without veins. Yes. So these are the beetles, of course. And so the beetles are all order Coleoptera. So anytime you see a ladybug, or what we would actually call a lady beetle, you can be like, oh, what a beautiful Coleoptera. And, and somebody who you're with would be like, what did you say? And you'd be like, a Coleoptera, Coleopteran. Because I'm like so smart now, because I know so much about insects. That's what you're going to say. Move on. We're almost there. Stay with me. So, okay, here we go. These are the same order. I just wanted to show you a dorsal and a ventral side. So, two wings. All right, you can't see it, but I promise you there are four wings there. Okay, so let's just move to number two. Four and hind wings are not alike in texture. One pair may be hard and dense. So here's the thing. That's true. The, these have, um, they're, they're, you only see the four wings here, but the hind wings underneath it uh, are more like those transparent flight wings. All right, cool. Four wings thick and leather-like at base. This is what we're talking about when we say leather-like at base. Do you see, this is the four wing. Here's a four wing, and it's actually covering the other four wing, and it comes in like this, and here's the other four wing. And do you see how it's kind of leathery there? That's what that character that's what we call parts of a dichotomous view that character is talking about so leather like at base all right mouth parts pointed and beak like to puncture prey and suck out body fluids that's what that's for so here's a fun thing these are the true freaking Bugs. Oh, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying that. Sorry, sorry, Dr. Jones. True bugs. Just order him if direct. These are the bugs. These are the bugs. So, this is a shield bug. Or, you know, stink bugs. Um, so, these organisms, these bugs in particular, are predatory. And what they do is they use their beak and they 
pierce their prey, and then they release a toxin into their prey to paralyze it. And then while the prey is paralyzed and the insides are like turning to goo, they suck it out. This is fun. Actually, yes, I'm just going to let you do that on your own time. But you could also Google this. I play too much. Okay, so Lithosaurus americanus is a giant water bug who is in the order Hemiptera. All right, so let us now go to our last one. This is the last order of insects. Um, oh, you know, no, Orthoptera. So we did Orthoptera. Um, Orthoptera are the grasshoppers. So just bear that in mind. Isoptera is also listed in your key. And the Isoptera are simply the termites. But here's our last, the last one I wanted to do. And notice that there are only two wings. So this is a fly in order Diptera. So the Diptera, oh, fiddlesticks. Yes, I did it right. Um, flies are the Diptera. So the Diptera consists of things like um, house flies, black flies, soldier flies. You may not know about those flies. That's okay. Um, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are true flies. They are order Diptera. So you are probably very familiar with those Dipterans. So that's all I have in terms of the insects there. Um, I hope you had fun. And I just want to remind you, let's actually go through this. This is fun. Let's have some fun, okay? Let's do it. So I always tell, I tell my students so quite a bit of, not all, but a good bit, some of what Disney does, some of it's ecologically correct, biologically correct. Um, not all of it, again, but let's go through. Here you have an ant. He is order Hymenoptera, so class Insecta. These are all class Insecta, right? All subphylum Hexapoda, all class Insecta, but just for fun. You have a Hymenopteran here. You have a beautiful, a beautiful Coleopteran here. So this is a lady beetle. This is actually another Hymenopteran in this movie. So this is the princess in the movie, right? Princess, princess. And she will eventually be the queen and queen ants. You have wings. That's why she has wings, right? But she is still a Hymenopteran. Heimlich, who is my favorite, he is a beautiful, he will be a beautiful butterfly. So he is Lepidoptera. And then the grasshopper, grasshopper is Orthoptera. Okay? And just so you're clear, not one single, not one single character in this picture is a bug. This should actually be an insect fly. Okay, so that's all I have for now. Um, if you want to, uh, you don't have to. I'm going to put it down here again. I'm not like trying to get you to at me, but just if I post, um, that's my like school Instagram, if, and I post um, insects, and in the hashtags, I will put like the domain, the kingdom, phylum, subphylum, like all the taxonomy that you learn, I put in the hashtags. So if you've been in my class and you've been following along with this and you haven't noticed that yet, I'm literally making you a study guide basically out of Instagram because I've got your kingdom and phylum and your various taxonomic or um, distinctions in the hashtags. So be aware of that. Okay. Thank you so much for hanging with me and I hope you learned